In a world where beauty is too often overlooked, one man emerges to capture its essence like never before. On February 20th, 1902, photographer Ansel Adams is born in San Francisco. Adams' hyperactivity sees him kicked out of several private schools, and his father pulls him at age 12 in favor of private tutors. At 14, he visits Yosemite National Park for the first time, where his father gives him his first camera. He takes a part-time job with a San Francisco photograph finisher and learns darkroom technique. He joins the Sierra Club and takes a summer job as a janitor at the club's lodge in Yosemite from 1920 to 1923. He captures impressive landscape photographs in his off hours. Many of his most powerful photos throughout his career are taken in Yosemite. Much of Adam's work focuses on America's untouched wilderness areas, particularly in national parks and other protected areas of the American West. Adams is widely considered both the most important landscape photographer of the 20th century and the most beloved photographer in U.S. history. He is also noted for his work as a conservationist. Adams' popularity has only increased since his death in 1984 at age 82. Stay tuned for more on Ansel Adams. We'll learn more about his youth, including how he was injured by an earthquake at age four, how he was affected by the 1918 Spanish flu, and how his love for another artistic medium nearly resulted in a very different career, but also, surprisingly, led him to meet his future wife. We'll also learn how he transformed photography and how later in life he shifts his focus somewhat. Also, don't forget to check out Today in History in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. There's a link in the description. All right, age four, 1906, this famous San Francisco earthquake. Uh, the initial earthquake, he's fine, but then one of the aftershocks causes him to fall face first into a garden wall. Um, he damages his nose, breaks it pretty severely, and it's never properly reset, and it's distinctively crooked for the rest of his life. In fact, it even affected his breathing, and apparently he was something of a mouth breather. Spanish flu, 1918. He's 16 years old, and he is hit with it and hit hard. It takes several weeks for him to recuperate, and it affects him greatly also because of some of the things he reads while he's, you know cooped up in his room and he becomes very obsessed with cleanliness and he starts washing his hands after just about every activity in a very obsessive manner. Um, his next trip though to Yosemite really helps to cure him of these compulsions and there's something uh, for him I guess that's very healing about nature and uh, he was able to overcome those difficulties. He, his first love truly was music, and when he first drops out of school, he dedicates himself completely, or almost completely, to the study of music, especially the piano, and he becomes a very accomplished pianist. In fact, uh, it's thought that he could have definitely made a career of it. He was that good uh, as a professional pianist, um, but uh, it's a little bit of a difficulty for him uh, to practice uh, during the summers when he's at Yosemite. But one of the rangers introduces him to a landscape painter by the name of Harry Best. And this man has a piano in his summer studio there at Yosemite. And it's there where he's practicing the piano, but he also meets Best's daughter, Virginia. And a few years later, Ansel Adams and Virginia marry. Now, that particular studio of Harry Best today is, the, is known as the Ansel Adams Gallery there at Yosemite. By 1930, he decides to, he's going to turn his attention away from the piano and dedicate his life to photography. But he never loses his love for the piano, so much so that, in fact, in 1945, okay, uh, at that point, he's 43 years old. Uh, he still loves the piano enough that he decides to make some recordings of his own interpretations of the works of uh, Beethoven and Chopin. Okay, let's back up a little bit. 1927, Adams releases his first published photographic portfolio. He's just 25 years old. It includes 18 prints, including perhaps his most famous print, which is known as Monolith the face of Half Dome. And he earns $3,900 for this portfolio. It's, it's a good start for him, we'll say, in, in the world of photography. He, uh, a few years later in 1930, meets 
the famous photographer Paul Strand. And Adams is particularly struck by Strand's photographs of New Mexico. He's really impressed by these and also influenced by these. And it's the simplicity and the realism of these photos that really stands out to Ansel Adams. And, and he, he works to incorporate more of that in his own works. He uh, also writes a number of articles for popular photography publications. These are mainly technical articles about the art of photography. And by 1935, he has become quite famous in the photographic community, uh, so much so that London's studio publications commissions him to author a guidebook for photographic technique. And this guidebook is published in 1935. It's called Making a Photograph, and it's illustrated primarily with his own photos, and it's highly, highly successful. Uh, he uses his prominent position in the field of photography to really increase the idea and the public acceptance of photography as fine art on the same level as other types of fine art like painting and sculpture. And from the 1950s on, though, he shifts his focus a bit less to taking photographs and more to editing books of his own work, and most especially to his work as a conservationist. In fact, from 1934 to 1971, he serves as the director of the Sierra Club, which he had joined when he was just a boy. And of course, the Sierra Club was founded back in 1892 by the famous John Muir. Now, many of Adam's books later in life, in fact, are more focused on the ideas of conservationism and using his photographs to promote conservationism than on photography itself as an art. Uh, and uh, interestingly, in 1980, uh, President Jimmy Carter awards him the Medal of Freedom, which is the highest civilian honor that you can get here in the United States. And that was just four years before Adam's death. Well, remember, if you like what you've seen here today, please like and subscribe. And also, remember, you can watch another great Mr. Lewis video right here. And there's another one right over here. Thanks for watching.